Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our summer Bible studies, our summer Sunday school. Uh, we are picking up the summer with uh, Bible studies. We'll be posting these regularly online. And um, thanks for joining us. Wonderful to, to have you with us today as we begin the study. Uh, we'll start today with prayer. Uh, our prayer for today is going to be a verse from a hymn. Uh, in the hymnal, it's hymn number 908. And, uh, and so we pray this verse. Lord, open now my heart to hear, and through your word to me draw near. Let me your word, ere pure, retain. Let me your child and heir remain. Amen. Well, as we continue to look at God's Word and study God's Word throughout the summer, we're going to have uh, uh, various different uh, uh, stories and studies from the Scriptures that we're going to be looking at. Last week, Pastor Brian started us off with our uh, summer Bible studies uh, with the judges and looking specifically at Gideon, uh, the judge, and uh, looking at this, this period in the history of God's people, uh, the history of Israel. Um, and and to, to sort of recap, you you know, remember you have uh, the time of the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the 12 sons of Jacob, uh, the, the, the 12 sons of Israel, uh, Joseph down to uh, Egypt, and uh, the rest of the family eventually following him there. He provides for the people. And uh, then we have many centuries where uh, those descendants, those uh, 12 brothers, uh, their, their numbers continue continue to grow. They continue to remain in Egypt. Uh, they get larger and larger and larger, and they, they, they find themselves uh, in, in, in servitude and in slavery under Pharaoh. And, uh, and so God sends Moses, uh, raises up Moses as a leader to lead the people out from slavery and uh, uh, brings them out into the Sinai, uh, bringing them into the land of promise that God had promised to Abraham. And uh, the people begin to doubt. Um, we, we have the receiving of the commandments, the building of the golden calf, uh, idolatry on the part of the people. And uh, this uh, results in 40 years of wandering um, while that generation that uh, uh, had uh, rebelled against God uh, dies out. And uh, after 40 years, we have Moses, uh, his time as the leader of God's people coming to an end, and then Joshua, uh, the one who is going to take the people from those years of wandering into the promised land, the land of the Canaanites, to, uh, to, to come into the place where God said that he was going to take them. And so uh, we have the time of Joshua uh, arriving in the land and settling in the land. And after Joshua, then we get the time of the judges, uh, many different judges who ruled over uh, the, the people of Israel, uh, God raising up these judges routinely when moments of crisis will arise. And uh, we're talking about a time period here, the time of the judges, oh, roughly around 300 years or so, where we have uh, different judges. Uh, we, we heard about uh, Gideon and you might remember others like Deborah, Samson and others and on and on. Uh, who, uh, who, who were judges, leaders of the people at, at this time. So for our study today, where we're going to be going to is we're going to be looking at 1 Samuel chapter 3. And uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about the, the end of this era of the judges, uh, the last couple of judges that uh, God raises up uh, over, over Israel. Um, the last two judges, uh, men by the name of Eli and Samuel. And so this is a transition time. Uh, what we're going to do and, and what you see in First and Second Samuel is a movement here from this time of judges into this time of kings. And, uh, you know, the, the kings, uh, famously, it starts off with Saul, uh, the first king that, uh, that, that is chosen and the first king to rule over uh, the, the people. And... Um, uh, 
as we know and we'll sneak preview we won't be looking at it this summer but the story of Saul is not a good one uh it doesn't end very well uh Saul uh eventually finds himself rejected and um God selecting David to be the one who will take that place and so uh Eli and Samuel lead us into that time of Saul and then eventually the the kingship of David and then on uh, throughout the rest of the, the history of Israel up until what we call the Babylonian captivity and the time when uh, eventually uh, uh, the, the kingdom of Israel and, and Jerusalem will fall uh, and, uh, and, and they'll be taken into captivity and they'll be ruled over by the, the, the Babylonians, uh, uh, by the Assyrians. Um, eventually we see Greeks, Greece come in and, and they're ruled over by the Greeks. And then ultimately the Romans, which takes us to the time of Christ. So a little history in a nutshell there of uh, uh, of, of the, the the people of Israel and the in the kingdom of Israel. So uh, today, First uh, Samuel chapter three, uh, and looking at the the time of Eli and Samuel, the last of the judges that God has chosen. So uh, let's start off here. Uh, if you're using your study guide, um, the, uh, the 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 study will start off with uh, the first three verses of First Samuel chapter three. So we'll read those. Now the young man Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. So, a little bit of setting here. Who is Eli and who is Samuel? Uh, So Eli is the the priest uh, who, uh, uh, the judge, uh, the one who is the, uh, the, the, I guess you could say the head priest of this time. And uh, Eli is the, the, the priest uh, and Samuel is a young man, an assistant who is his helper. And so we we have Eli and uh, we have Samuel. Now, uh, the the situation in the first couple of chapters, what we read, and I invite you to go back and and read through these. It wouldn't take you too long. But you see in in 1 and 2 Samuel sort of the the story of the the origins and and background on uh, on these two men. And one of the things that we learn kind of surprisingly is that even though Eli is this judge and even though Eli is this priest, uh, he was one who, uh, you could say it this way, I guess he's, he's lost God's favor, uh, uh, lost, uh, lost that, that, that blessing of God, lost that confidence of God, um, due in large part to his family. Um, Eli uh, has uh, sons. Uh, he has a couple of sons who uh, um, were, were, were behaving quite badly. Um, they were uh, ones that would have been perhaps following in Eli's footsteps and, uh, you know, maybe traditionally been seen as ones who would be successors to Eli, but they had proven themselves unworthy uh, using their, their, their position and their place for uh, personal gain, acting immorally, uh, you know, all, all sorts of things. And so as a result of that, uh, Eli is falling out of favor here with God. And uh, um, Eli, uh, his household is rejected by God uh, because of the sons and also because Eli was really, you know, failing to exercise uh, um, uh, any sort of restraint over those sons and, and what they were doing, uh, uh, not calling them out, not uh, stopping them uh, in their, their dishonest dealings. And so uh, God has some pretty harsh words for Eli. He remains in his position but uh, because of his family situation, we see that uh, uh, pretty, uh, uh, pretty, pretty tough times for, uh, for him. So Samuel, where, where does Samuel come from? Well, in, in chapter 1, we hear the story of a couple, a couple named uh, Elkanah and Hannah. And uh, 
and this is always really interesting, you notice a lot of the stories in the Old Testament, going back to Abraham and such, um, uh, Elkanah and, uh, and Hannah find themselves in, in some familiar situations, like Abraham and Sarah. Uh, they're a, a couple who is um, aging and they're childless. Uh, they were unable to conceive children. And this was a, a, a great difficulty. We see, you know, great sorrow that this caused uh, both them, especially Hannah. And Hannah prays uh, to God and, and asks for a, a child and uh, even makes this vow that if she would be given a child, that she would give this child to God to serve him. And so she does conceive and uh, has this child named Samuel. Uh, and true to her word and her vow and promise, uh, he is, uh, as he grows and as he's a very young man, very little boy, uh, he is given to Eli to be kind of a servant of his in the temple and to help him. And so uh, where we pick up the story here right now, we see that um, uh, Samuel has been uh, a, a faithful servant. And what you're going to see throughout chapter 3 is you're going to see sort of this uh, rising here. Um, Samuel and, and, and his abilities and, uh, and, and his esteem rising uh, in the presence of God. Uh, while on the other hand, we, we see over here Eli and uh, uh, because of that unfaithfulness and because of, of who he was and, and the difficulties in his family with his sons and, uh, and everything that he did, uh, his, his favor declining. And we're going to see uh, uh, Samuel being raised up and lifted up by God. And we're going to see uh, the, the beginning of the end of Eli's time as, uh, as, as a judge and, uh, and serving God in this capacity. So uh, the the individuals kind of where they uh, where they come from here, um, uh, Samuel serving Eli. Uh, we we see the setting here. Eli getting older, his eyesight is diminished. Uh, he, he couldn't see anymore, um, and so it's an evening time. Uh, uh, Eli resting in his place and in his home. Um, Samuel uh, somewhere in the vicinity of the tabernacle. Uh, um, you know, resting there and uh, and sleeping and uh, uh, and we see just by the 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 responses here just how um, uh, faithful um, Samuel is and uh, dedicated uh, he is and so uh, and 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 that will carry on. You'll see this throughout the the, the books of First and Second Samuel as we encounter uh, Samuel in God's service. And an interesting thing here in uh, verse one, um, we get this report, uh, uh, the 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 words uh, and, and the report of what it was like during this time of Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days, and there was no frequent vision. And so this is one of those times and one of those periods, and we see these sort of pop up uh, time and time again. Um, maybe most notably uh, in what we call the intertestamental time period, uh, that time from about uh, uh, 400 B.C. up until the time of Christ. Uh, a time there also where uh, you could say the same sort of thing. The, the word of the Lord was rare in those days, and there was no frequent vision. Um, and, and basically what, what we're seeing here is a time when, when there was uh, uh, very little prophetic activity. Um, you know, we, we see throughout the Old Testament prophetic revelations, you know, given through Moses, uh, given through Joshua, uh, during this time of Samuel, later on with prophets like Isaiah and Jeremiah, and all through the years of even the Babylonian captivity, we see this, this activity, this prophetic activity of, of prophets uh, speaking the word of God, receiving these visions from God uh, in what to tell and instruct and teach the people. Um, and and this is one of those times apparently during the uh, uh, during the time of Eli where uh, things were infrequent there uh, there wasn't much happening there wasn't much of that our, our study guide asked the question uh, imagine your life without God's word and what would it be like what does God's word do for you and how does it change everything in your life well God's word does change everything in our life we believe in that active word of God that uh, that, that is spoken to us through the scriptures and uh, the, the power in that word, the word combined with water and baptism, the word with the bread and the wine and the Lord's Supper, uh, that, that word of God that uh, gives us his grace and his peace and that word that instructs us in our life. And uh, 
uh, think about what it would be like to to be separated from that word, um, and 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 just how painful and how difficult that would be, and, and the impact that would have on people. Uh, when you get away from that word of God, people start to wander. You know, when when you don't have that 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 direction of God, we we don't have His grace. Uh, uh, when when we don't receive that. Uh, uh, that that word that God gives to us, it becomes a, a very difficult thing. Um, you know, people start to follow their own way and go on their own path to do whatever it is that they think is right and whatever uh, uh, whatever uh, whatever they think is is good. And we know from our own experience that our own conscience and our own intuition are really terrible guides for us. We need that word of God, the word of God that guides us, and we need we need constantly um you know straying away for a little while i know many people during this time of of coronavirus who said you know that was very difficult uh even though we we do church virtually and 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 deliver it over the 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 internet and and there are other ways you know through through television and radio uh to have that word of god it, you know it, it, it you can find yourself starting to wander this is the importance of of that connection to God's word through the community of faith, the church that God has given to us, and and the blessing that He gives us of being a part of that community of faith, and and how important that is for uh, uh, um, for for our our, our life, um, for our peace, for the joy that it gives us, uh, but also the, the the challenges that can come from being separated from that. So, uh, you know, we we eagerly desire being in that word, you know, being in that word daily in our own personal life, but also having that, that corporate life of the, the church, the body of Christ that, uh, that God has placed us in to support, encourage, um, at times admonish us and to uh, 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 deliver, as we're going to see with Samuel here, sometimes a hard word uh, that, that we need to uh, hear and receive that says, hey, shape up, change. It's time to change your ways. Uh, you know that that's that's another part of this, and something that that we need to hear too. So, uh, God's word rare during this time, um, uh, difficult time for uh, for for people. Uh, probably a time where where faithfulness is sort of declining, and and people probably wandering and and going in lots of different directions. But as we're going to see uh, through Samuel uh, and. Uh, uh, through the work that God is going to do with Samuel and, and, and with David later on, uh, we see the ways that God is going to work uh, and uh, the ways that his word is coming to his people and, and the ways that God is going to act. So uh, so the importance of God's word. We need that word, uh, um, his, um, uh, his word that, that gives us salvation and, uh, and, and guides us in our day-to-day -day life, too. So... Uh, so going on, um, next section, we'll look at uh, verses 4 through 9 here. And so picking up again at verse 4, we have uh, Eli sleeping, Samuel resting in the, in the tabernacle uh, sometime before daybreak, and, uh, and, and here's uh, where things start to happen again. Things have been silent, but now God's going to start to speak, and uh, we're going to start to have the word of God. So verse 4. Then the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not know yet that the Lord, that it was the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. So Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the young man. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. 
So Samuel is uh, sleeping. He awoke when he heard his name, and naturally he assumed that it was uh, Eli calling him because he... Uh, uh, he, he needed something. And, and here we're starting to see some of the, the, the differences maybe in the personality, differences in the character of these two individuals. Uh, uh, Samuel, uh, very, you know, faithfully, obediently, um, you know, hearing the, this call, assuming that it's, uh, it's his master and, and the one that he is there to serve, thinking that it's Eli and Samuel responding to that. And, and Eli's responses to this, uh, you know, seem a little bit impatient. You know, I mean, uh, you know, go back, go lay down. You know, uh, uh, slightly maybe peevish, you could read into it here a little bit in how uh, Eli is responding, a little bit impatient with uh, this you know, the, the, the silly young man who's, uh, you know, coming to him and, and uh, you know, when he isn't calling him and, and, and seeming a little bit annoyed with him in, in, in all of this. But uh, Samuel, uh, Samuel man is a, a, a young man and a man who, who is very astute, very obedient here. Um, you know, thinking about the fourth commandment, uh, honor your father and mother. And when we think about that commandment, we remember that uh, uh, it's uh, the God's command there is for us to honor our authorities who are over us, um, be it uh, the, the the parents, our mom and dad, or as we go on through life, we see many authorities who are over us. Uh, you know, our our our, our, our boss, our, uh, our government. You know, all these different places, and so. You know, all of these authorities uh, who, who get their authority from God, honoring those authorities. And so uh, um, uh, Samuel, uh, in this case, uh, his authority, uh, as his parents have given him over to Eli to serve him and, and to serve God in his house, uh, you know, doing what he's supposed to do, honoring that commandment and responding uh, when he hears this call, which is only natural to assume it, it's going to be Eli. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and who is... Uh, 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 who, who's, who's who's talking to him? But in fact, we we know we have the the, the narrator's uh, insight here that is telling us that this isn't Eli, but that this is God calling Samuel by name. Um. Uh, interesting that uh, you know, God keeps calling uh, you know calling Samuel here. And, and speaking to him, you know, sort of jumping over Eli and, uh, uh, and, 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 you know, going directly to Samuel here. So we're starting to already get that sense of, uh, uh, of, of Eli's fall and Samuel's rise taking place here. And, uh, um, and, and, and a little bit of insight into uh, into what is going to be happening here, and and God specifically wanting to talk to Samuel directly without Eli being present. Um, one of the things that uh, that we're going to see in a little bit is that God has a pretty hard word uh, about Eli here, and uh, has some uh, some pretty tough things to say about him. And so this is something that uh, um, again, you know, God's rejection uh the rejection of eli and his household and now he's going to be working through samuel um interesting uh uh interesting comment here uh or a note from the uh uh, from the, the narrator and the author here. Uh, now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And so, um, you know, the, this is uh, uh, a, a question for us in, uh, in, in understanding um, how is it, you know, uh, what, 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 is, what, is, what are we hearing about Samuel here, that he didn't know the Lord? Um, and, and this isn't necessarily a statement of ignorance on his part. You know, he's been working in the temple. He has heard the word of God. He's, he's, he's a young man of faith, but he is young and he is inexperienced and um, uh, perhaps not really understanding yet exactly what is happening and, and, and what's taking place here. Um, also a, a place here to talk about God's call. 
and in in God's word and uh, um, when and and how does God call and and in what ways does he call Um, in in these cases in the scriptures what we see is we see a time and a place where God is is doing what we call immediate um, calls where uh, he is speaking directly to people we see him speaking to Moses uh, we, we, we see him speaking to Samuel here. He speaks to the prophets, uh, speaks to David, uh, immediately, directly speaking to these individuals. Um, now, uh, what we oftentimes will say is that we hear God's word, we hear God's call. It is, uh, in our day right now, um, uh, mediated through his word. Um, and, and delivered to us. And, and uh, you know, we talk about in the church making calls. We call pastors, uh, we call teachers into different situations and different vocations. And there uh, we, we begin those call meetings with prayer and asking for God's blessing and, and for his wisdom and, and for his Holy Spirit to be at work in us as we're deliberating and considering those calls and then extending that call and and trusting that his Holy Spirit is working through all of this to lead us and to guide us to uh, do uh, what his will wants and and what he desires for us in those situations. So, um, you know, we we have those, uh, you know, as pastors and and teachers and and servants of of God in this day and age, we we have those uh, mediated calls that come to us, the Holy Spirit working through those congregations and saying to you, pastor, teacher, DCE, wherever it is you are, I, I want you to serve here. Here is where I want you to be. Here is where I want you to go or, or to consider that and, and to, uh, to, to, to deliberate upon that. So immediate and immediate calls. Um, and Samuel getting that immediate call. And boy, wouldn't that, isn't that something we would all love to see sometimes, you know, to, to just be able to have that direct word from God because so many times now, you know, we, we, we're left to, uh, uh, to, to consider and to uh, deliberate and to really think about these things and, and to trust in God as we hear his voice and as we respond faithfully to that call, whatever it is that God has given us, wherever it is that he wants us to be, whatever it is that he wants us to do. So uh, the immediate call, Samuel, the voice of God speaking directly to him. Um, Our our reflection questions, uh, put yourself in Samuel's place. Based on the text, what do you think his feelings were? Um, Do the same for Eli. Uh, What does this tell us about how God can call you into his service? Uh, Again, you know, listening, um, knowing that God is working through those people around us and things around us to uh, give us opportunities to uh, be his faithful servants and uh, uh, to think about uh, how exciting that is for us in Christ to know that we do this in his grace, to know that he is upholding us and blessing us and, uh, uh, and, and that he is going to be at work through all things. It give us, gives us that confidence to approach it uh, knowing that uh, God is the one who is who's at work in, in all things and through all things. So uh, so going on now, uh, looking at uh, Samuel and Eli, uh, what is this uh, this word that uh, that that God is going to deliver to Samuel? So let's look at verses 10 through 14 next. And the Lord came and stood calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. Then the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I am about to do a thing in Israel at which the two ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house, from beginning to end. And I declare to him that I am about to punish his house forever, for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God, and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be atoned for by sacrifice or offering forever. Oh, so uh, a hard word here. Um, You know, God's message to Samuel, um, you know, starts off, I'm about to do something that's going to make the ears of everyone who hears this message, uh, their ears are going to be tingling and not in a good way. 
uh, you know, this is sort of that experience of dread because we see that uh, there's going to be bad things coming. God's judgment is coming. Um, God's judgment's going to be coming down on Eli and on his household and on his sons here. Uh, and, uh, and, and again, it comes back to Eli's lack of, of restraint, um, his inability to, uh, to, to rein uh, his sons in in their, uh, their, their disobedience and their dirty dealings and, and their blaspheming uh, God. And, and God's law is severe. Um, you know, as we see here, that the, this is this is done. It's sealed. Uh, um, their iniquity, their sin. God says it can't be atoned for by a sacrifice forever. And so, uh, you know, God's judgment is is coming down here. Um, and, and our discussion questions: uh, When conserving God, also mean bringing unpopular or unpleasant news. Uh, what should we remember so that we do not get discouraged when God's word prompts us to bring this sort of news? to others. Uh, you know, there are times we see this here, God's judgment. God's judgment is, is, is severe. Um, and, and, and this is why when we hear in the scriptures talking about fearing God, you know, recognizing that, you know, th this God is the, the God who is the creator. He is the judge. He is holy. He is perfect and cannot abide sin. And, you know, we, we see it here with, with how he's uh, handling and, and treating Eli and his sons. Um, you know, God's judgment. But the, 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 the thing we got to remember is, you know, we, we, we can't just ignore that. We have to recognize that uh, God's word, God's will, and his law stand, and they are good. And, uh, and, and, and this is what he desires and what his will is. We see it in the commandments. We see it in, uh, uh, in, in, in the word that he speaks to us, what he desires, you know, to, to love him with all of our heart, to love our neighbors as ourselves. And, uh, um, and, and, and we see the price for that. You know, Paul later on, you know, talking about this, uh, the, the wages of sin is death. So don't take this lightly and understand that, our God is a God who uh, uh, is all-powerful and a God who does judge. Um, in, in seminary, I remember a professor of ours uh, uh, talking about this and, and uh, you know, d describing it in this way and, and remember not taking it lightly, you know, and, and, and using this phrase. Remember, there is a hell and people are going there. Um, and and so, uh, you know, the, this, this is real. Uh, this is... Uh, not pretend this is not play but we also remember that th this work of god the, the, this judgment and this condemnation this is what sometimes what we call god's alien work meaning that uh this is the the work that uh does not come naturally to him this is not what he wants this is not what he desires he does not set out uh with this desire and will to condemn and destroy and and, and judge and punish. Remember that God is good, and at the very beginning of everything, He made it all very good. And so we, we talk about God's alien work, His judgment. God's proper work is His saving and His grace and His forgiveness, which comes to us in the work that He do, does for us in the cross of Jesus Christ and in the resurrection, where He forgives our sins and where He gives us eternal life. And this is a free gift that our loving Father wants to, to give to everyone who believes in him. He doesn't want to make this difficult. He, he doesn't put tricks or obstacles in our way. What he says is he says to you, look, in the cross, I have done it all for you. In Jesus Christ, it is all finished. And so God's, God's proper work, the work that he loves and, and the one that reveals his character to us, is, is is his salvation and the fact that, that 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 he gives us freely to everyone who believes upon him, everyone who trusts in him, uh, everyone who uh, who has that faith and that faith that the Holy Spirit works in us, uh, where you know he's the one who even does all of that and, and comes into us and and gives us that that word to trust and believe in him. Uh, this this is the, the the work that God desires to do and the work that. Uh, 
uh, that, that he wants to do. But he, he still has his law. His word of warning still stands. And it's that word of warning that sometimes we got to deliver to people uh, as pastors and also as fellow Christians to our, our, our friends, our children, our parents, our family members, whoever it might be. Uh, when we see them veering off and going off on that different track and going their own way and doing their own thing and 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 getting separated from that word of god and 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 getting distance between them and 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 god's grace and 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 denying that work of the holy spirit and trying to turn away from it uh that's something that that really uh gives us that 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 fear um and, and thinking that somebody we love could be in that position of uh, of looking at God's judgment and and so when we go to them uh, we we want to we want to see that correction you know we, we speak the truth but we speak it in love knowing that uh, what we desire what we wish for somebody is not our own will but God's will and, and his goodness for them and so uh, uh, you know we, we, we don't we don't go to someone else to, to point out their sins to them or, or to tell them, hey, you're on the wrong road just because we want to feel better than them or holier than them or, or something like that. Uh, but we're, we're concerned for them. Um, you know, we, we love them and we care about them and we want them to know, you know, you're 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 getting on thin ice. You're getting on dangerous ground here. Uh, you know, I, I love you. I care about you. I don't want to see uh you get hurt. I, I don't want to see you separated from from that grace, and and so uh, so so sometimes you know we, we get that hard word that that we uh, uh, that that we hear and that we receive, but knowing that uh, this is the attitude of a loving parent who wants to correct a child who's uh, uh, who, who's doing something uh, wrong, and in uh, doing this in love, in danger because no in, in danger. Of even greater harm, and knowing that even worse could come if we we if if we don't say the hard word, if we don't do the hard thing, if we don't speak that truth in love, and so uh, that that gives us that uh, that 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 comfort uh, in knowing uh, even sometimes when we have to say the hard thing or do the hard thing or practice tough love, uh, that uh, knowing that in the long run it's going to be better. In the short term, sometimes that can hurt and it can be painful and. Uh, and and uh, and it's gonna be difficult, but we we persist and we stay uh, with them through their through their side and and pray for them through this all and uh, uh, trust in God's work, uh, His alien work, uh, the, the the threat of punishment and the the possibility of what could be uh, condemnation, rejection, which uh, brings us back in and in, uh, in repentance. Uh, in, in, in coming to uh, our, our, our Father and, uh, and, and confessing our sins and, and hearing that word of forgiveness and, and receiving that word of grace again. So difficult word, uh, hard stuff. You know, young Samuel here, uh, uh, his ministry starting off in a really tough way uh, with a, a, a really tough word that he has to speak to the one uh, who is um, kind of his uh, his mentor, uh, Eli, and the one who who is over him here. So, uh, so going on, uh, wrapping up the rest of the chapter here, um, uh, verse fifteen, and uh, going through the end of the chapter. Samuel lay until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord, and Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he said, Here I am. And Eli said, What was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. And he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was established as a prophet of the Lord. And the Lord himself appeared again at Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel at Shiloh by the word of the Lord. So, um, next morning, uh, Eli uh, understandably a little bit curious and a little bit anxious, you know, 
uh, what's going on here? You know, I'm the I'm the priest. I'm the judge right now. You know, what, what's God talking to this young whippersnapper here? And you know, what what kind of message does He have for him? And and so uh, uh, and and you know, Eli's calling Samuel, and you notice here even threatening him. You know, and and saying to him, Hey, you know, tell me what you heard. And uh, you know, if you don't, if you withhold this from me, and if you don't tell me. You know, whatever it is that God said, you know, let, let it happen to you double if if, uh, if you don't tell me the truth. And so uh, uh, true to his character, Samuel, uh, as an obedient, faithful uh, man, uh, young man, even even in the, the, the situation he is with, you know, Eli and, and he's the servant here, tells him the truth and, and says uh, what, what he needs to say. Uh, you know, he doesn't hold any of God's truth back. Uh, one of the uh, one of the, the the great things about him, and as we see throughout his time as a judge and as a prophet, um, uh, you know, speaking that truth, you know, speaking the true word of God, not holding any of it back, even though it is going to be difficult. And uh, and so he tells him all that, and Eli hears it, and, and he receives it, and and, and Eli's response here, uh, which, which could be maybe understood a couple of ways. Uh, you know, Eli says, well, it's the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. And, uh, you know, it could be maybe that sense of resignation on Eli's part that he's realizing, okay, the, the writing's on the wall. You know, it's it's time. I've, you know, I, 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 I've been rejected. You know, this is it. My time is up, uh, you know, and, and I'm done. Or, uh, you know, maybe there's a little bit of sort of a rebellious streak here and a sense of sarcasm even. In, in how he's talking about God, you know, well, let him do whatever he thinks best, I guess, whatever, you know, uh, maybe even wondering, you know, whether or not this is really true. So, uh, uh, again, we're, we're seeing a little bit of a, a window into uh, uh, the, the character of each of them and perhaps the, the, the reason why uh, we see uh, Samuel and, and his favor rising and Eli and his favor declining here uh, in, in terms of uh, also how how they respond. You know, look at how faithful Samuel is. And uh, and also look at Eli and, and look at this. You know, y- you could think about it this way. Um, here's Samuel coming to Eli and, and delivering this hard word of God, just like if somebody came to you or me and, and, and told us something difficult and, and spoke the truth to us about something that, that's going on or something that we're doing or not doing. And you know, whenever we're confronted with with those sorts of things, there there there's there there's a couple of ways that, that you can respond to it. Um, one, you you could uh, you could be like Eli and just sort of brush it away and and uh, and disregard it, or you could be um, I'll use David as an example of this. You know, later on, David. Um, uh, David as king, we know that, that he, he was a, a great man. It says a man after God's own heart, but yet he was not a perfect man. Um, the, the, the situation of David and Bathsheba and the adultery and the murder that, that took place in, in, in that shows us that. But you'll remember that when uh, Nathaniel comes to David and confronts him in that and calls him out on this, um, you know, David, you know, here he's king. He could, you know, could have had Nathaniel taken away, had him executed, could have dismissed him, could have just disregarded him and said, well, whatever, you know, and stuff like that. But how does, how does David respond? Repent. He, he's sorry. He, he, he comes face to face with his sin and he realizes that he has sinned against God. And, and read Psalm 51 when you want to see, you know, what, what impact that had on David. You know, it, it, it knocked him to the ground. It knocked him to his knees. And, and confessed his sin and repented and 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 here again Eli is confronted with this too and and uh, you know w- was there a possibility it seems like there's a pattern in Eli's life of, of uh, you know thinking somehow maybe he's above this need to repent uh, maybe his position had gone to his head and uh, you know he had he thought that he was above all of that but uh, as we see here this isn't the case uh, uh, you know, he, you know, when, when we're confronted with that sin, repent, know that nothing is hidden from God, and know that God is gracious and He desires, He He wants to hear our honest confession. 
and he he wants to give us and he he has given that grace already in the cross and and he just desires for us to know that and to trust in him uh, and to look toward the example of David and to not follow the example of Eli but to recognize our sin and to to confess so uh so it says that Samuel goes on, he grew, his, his, his reputation uh, spreads far and wide uh, from uh, coast to coast, from uh, sea to shining sea, from Dan to Beersheba. Uh, everybody, uh, you know, becoming obvious that uh, there's some good things and God's doing amazing stuff through Samuel and through his ministry and through the word uh, that, um, uh, that, that, that he is delivering to the people. So... Uh, and, and the story goes on and, and continues on into uh, chapters 4 and 5 and throughout Samuel. Um, reflection question here. It's unclear whether Eli's response was a resolve to God's will or sarcasm, as we said earlier. Uh, what does this show us about what we should expect from others as we serve the Lord? Well, again, you know, there, there are uh, different, different ways uh, as, you know, hard words that that need to come sometimes hard words that we need to deliver um you know know that that sometimes uh when you do that you you may see the blessing of repentance and you might see uh uh an erring brother uh seeing the 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 mistake and the sin that they've committed and the david response um faith and repentance but also in in some areas and in some places uh uh, maybe more the the Eli response, uh, skepticism, doubt, unbelief, and, and, and a lack of faith, and uh, and so we just pray to God to to keep us humble, uh, to uh, uh, not get that big head where we uh, where we think that uh, we have outgrown uh, the need for God's grace and the the need for for His forgiveness. Um, Luther, you know. Um, talked about the benefit and the blessing of baptism and said, hey, understand this. You know, there, there is enough every single day of your life to think about your baptism and what God has done for you there and to live in that. And, and don't ever outgrow that. That was the issue he saw in some of his days that, uh, you know, there were a lot of really, really, really bright people who, uh, you know, were, were, were studying lots of things and, and offering a lot of conjecture about God's word and uh, you know they 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 were sometimes full of themselves, and and they weren't being humbled anymore, and and in some ways thinking that they had outgrown that need for simple confession, and to hear that word of forgiveness, and and to 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 trust in 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 God's goodness and in His grace, and to uh, live out their baptism, and so uh, prayer that we we are always kept. Our, keep our hearts tender and not hardened uh, to hear God's word, uh, to, to come to him, to be knocked to our knees when we see that uh, we are, as long as we're in this world, constantly in that sin, but to uh, re receive his, his promise, to receive his forgiveness, to trust in what he has done for us. So pray this was a blessing to you. Again, I encourage you to, to read on as you go through the rest of Samuel. You see uh, eventually that uh, decline and, and uh, uh, the, the death of Eli and, and his sons, but Samuel and an increase. Not that it was easy for him. Uh, he was judged during a very difficult time. This is when the, uh, the people began to uh, cry out to God, we want a king like all the other nations in the world. And at that point, when you, you hear that cry, we want a king like all the other nations, you should almost hear that, that music, you know, dun, 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 you know, some of that music of doom, because, um, you, you know, sure enough, they do get a king like all the other nations. They, they, they get King Saul, who, who was uh, true to the warning. Samuel warns them about this and says, hey, king's not going to be the solution. You already have a king over you, and that king is God. Uh, if you want a human king over you, then you're going to get the whole kit and caboodle of all the the, the 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 difficulties that he can bring, you know, and and getting you into wars and, you know, taking your children and putting them in armies and taxes and, you know, all that stuff, you know, and, and the egos of kings. And sure enough, you see that with Saul. Uh, sometimes it's good. You know, David, you see a, a good example there. And, and you go on through the kings and you see there are uh, several of them who are some good examples. Hezekiah, good things to say about him. 
uh, Joe Joe Ash, I believe, another king who good things to say about him as well. Uh, but uh, there are also lots and lots of the kings who bad things that happen and 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 uh, unfaithful and and uh, um, blaspheme God and uh, and and do lots of things that don't help. And so uh, you see that throughout the time of kings, which is ultimately going to lead us to our king of kings uh, as uh, uh, God establishes the, the, the kingdom and his throne that will never end in sending Christ and, uh, and, and the, the, the forgiveness as he is enthroned upon the cross with the crown of thorns. Uh, but he rises victorious as, as the Lord of all and our king of kings who rules over us. So God's blessings to you as you live in faith, and uh, God's peace be with you in these days ahead.